Hey guys, Sensory George here. Have you ever wondered how to bring your brake balls from the dojo to the street? Well, stick around to find out what would ninjas do. Hey guys, so today we're going over the forward roll brake ball, also known as Zempo Kaiten Ukemi. So first, let's go over this traditionally. We start off in Ichi Monji no Kamae, our uh, leading arm stance. And then from here, we rock forward, putting our hands into the inside, and we're gonna begin doing a forward roll. I'll do a whole forward roll tutorial on another day, but just remember it's gonna be from shoulder to hip. So from this, I tuck my chin, forward roll, and this leg stays bent and braced up. This leg shuts, uh, juts out so that it's able to extend, and then this arm matches that and slaps. From here, I keep my eyes on my opponent or the, whatever the situation is. I start to rock forward, lead using my foot and my hand, I lift my body up off the ground. And then from that, I pull it through so that I can stand back up and go into stance, looking at whatever I need to at that moment. So just one more time. We go into stance, rock forward, tuck your chin, shoulder to hip. Brace, slap out, look at my target and get up, stance. Now, one other important element that I need to go over for beginners doing this is that you have to key eye. The key eye lets you get air out of your diaphragm in case you hit the ground so you don't get the air knocked out of you. So I'm gonna do it once with a proper key eye uh, used for defensive measures. From here, Boop! Then I get up and I go into stance. Yeah. So it's important that you do that key eye in case you do get the air knocked out of you, you're pushing it out. The more advanced you get, those type of breathing maneuvers become natural. But you have to do it loud and over-exaggerated until you get uh, an understanding of why you're doing it in the first place. So, what are some of the issues of doing it the classic way on our harder surfaces such as concrete? I'm gonna be going over that now. So, when I go into this roll again, and I go here and I slap out, okay? On the mat and grass, this is fine. But what happens is that when your foot is extended all the way out, or even just enough, this foot is going to whip down, smacking into the ground, either causing an ankle injury uh, by spraining it or from the impact. And this hand, smacking it out. Every martial arts uh, dojo you see doing break falls in for their warm-ups and rolls uh, in public demonstrations, often have this loud slap, and you'll hear it on the mats. Uh, echo out through the crowd and the crowd goes wild, they love it. But what they don't understand is that they're putting themselves in danger. You fight how you train. So you might as well train as how you want to fight. So if I were to fall on concrete or something hard and I'd smack both those out, I'm injuring myself before I get back up into a fight. This could actually be a fight ender if I hit my foot completely wrong and then I try to get back up and then I realize my ankle may have been sprained and I'm trying to fight in a uh, compromised situation. So let's go over how to fix that. This is how you bring it to the street. When you go to do the same roll, you wanna keep your body in a little bit tighter and have both legs bent and your triceps in. By having it in, you're actually preventing all of this from happening and you're absorbing the impact with your larger muscle groups being your tricep and your upper thigh. So when you get into that situation, you're able to get back up and then be ready to fight without taking skeletal damage uh, by using your flexible part of your body, your muscles, to absorb that shock. So that's a very important part about how to bring this break ball from the dojo to the street. Now, one other aspect behind this that you have to keep in mind is that we're training these techniques to be used for, say we're being thrown by a wrist lock or someone is actually doing a hip throw to bring us over into the ground. So we're gonna set up a demo real quick for you guys to see that and how I can actually use this break ball from a throw. So you wanna come over this way? We have Rishi D here. She's gonna be doing a hip throw against me. So that way I can show you guys how the break ball is used against throws. So what we have here is that she's coming forward with a hip throw. And as she goes to step forward and do this, you have to realize that now it's a break ball over your left shoulder. Just like I was showing before about Zempo Kitan, the uh, forward roll into the break ball. This is nothing but a forward roll in midair. So as she begins to do the hip bump and squash you over, as she begins that twist, your left foot begins to brace the ground and lower you into the brake ball. 
from that, get up, try to maintain eye contact and be ready to fight again. So that's one portion to take note of on how to do it against a throw. So now we're gonna reiterate about how to do the break fall on the street, on the street. Okay, so same deal. We go to our stance to forward roll and then we come out into our break fall, okay? Staying tight and making sure that you're using your muscles and breathing out is extremely important. Now here's the deal. Don't just believe this, go outside and try it under the guidance of a certified instructor. Uh, you can find us around different martial arts schools, but make sure you're practicing about how to apply what you do inside the dojo, outside the dojo. And that way you can actually have faith in your techniques and the confidence that if someone were to throw you on concrete, you would actually be able to take it full heartedly. Now, what we're gonna be going over next is a few different drills that can set you up and teach you how to do these break falls great, okay? So, first of all, you need the leg strength. And the reason that you need the leg strength is because when the break ball comes out and if it's a throw, uh, when you look back into the uh, throw portion, I had my left leg brace myself as I went down, which lowered my body down to the ground into a roll. Now, this alone will help you understand the motion of it and set you up for a pistol squat in which you're using your hand, but it's gonna help you develop the muscles for your legs to be able to take the absorption. And then you can practice jumping, landing, and still getting back up in the fighting stance. So that's the portion of uh, jumps that you can do for this. Now what you can also do, of course, push-ups and dips. Why push-ups and dips? Because you want to develop your bicep and tricep, because if you notice, down here, it's nothing but tricep dips, okay? We're off on one side. We're trying to get up. This is a tricep dip to pop your body back up to get you ready to fight. So definitely work on squats, dips, and one other portion, uh, you definitely want to start uh, using your abs because when you were to do the break fall from the roll, this is a crunch. With that crunch is what also prevents your head from hitting the ground when you come from a throw. If you're not tucking your body in, even if you did everything else right, the back of your head can bounce and hit the ground and knock you out. It's very important to keep your abs tight, your chin tucked, and to breathe out with that ki -ai. So we hit the ground and we'll pull. Yeah. Uh, forget that hand slap. Pull. And then we get back up and make sure we're set. Yeah. So definitely keep your body in tight. Thigh, tricep, a lot of absorption. This leading leg, let it do its dip and support you as you come down into the break ball. Get back up. You're set. This is an extremely important technique. Now, after you've mastered this technique and you want to get really good, you have to start going into it at different heights. So we're going to go into the grass real quick just to show you this. And as you saw in the intro, I already did it on concrete. So what I'm saying is, beginner, you come down as low as you can, you forward roll, you break fall. No pain, you're set, okay? Doesn't hurt at all. Now, you need to be able to do this against throws, wrist locks, whipping you into a throw, and to come out of it unscathed. So the next step is to do it from higher up. So if you were doing it from here as a knee, what you gotta do is get here and now throw this leg over into the break fall. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set it up for you guys. Ready? One, two, three, over, break fall. Okay, everything else is the same. One more time. Lean over, set for my roll, but now I gotta do an airborne, jump, break fall. Breathe out, look at my opponents, get up, get ready to fight. So that's the next level of how to do it. And all you have to do is scale your heights higher, higher, higher. The more you can do it on this with greater heights, the more confidence you should have doing it at lower heights on the concrete. So this is also how you would handle, say, if you were to do a flip of some sort and come out of it too high and realize that you opened your tuck too early and you have to break fall. It's just higher up, lowering yourself down from that whip. And it's the same thing if I were to jump up in the air, tabletop myself, and come down onto my side. Not a back break fall where I use both sides of my back, but one side. So another way of doing this is instead of flipping into it, if you're not comfortable with that, is to actually jump and cable your body and then land. So to show that one time, I'm standing here. I jump up and then practice my break. One more time, kick my legs up. Break ball. Yeah. In that instance, you guys can see me starting to use my hand 
but I don't stick it out and I'm not slapping. What I'm doing is that tricep motion, but in reverse. I'm using it to lower my body while I'm in the air to start it into the roll so I can roll to my tricep. I'm not smacking the ground with that. So just one more time and now you guys can focus on that. I'm here, I kick up, I land. See my hand, brace, and then get up. So hopefully you guys learn how to break fall better. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let me know if you guys have any videos that you specifically want to see in the comments below, and I'll see if I can add it to the video quick. This is Sensei George from What Would Ninjas Do, and thank you for watching. Domo arigatou gozaimashita.